there's a grant game that I call it that some institutions and organizations play and this is how the game goes <clears throat> in our communities where you have at-risk youth there's always some type of federal or state funding to target that demographic right so you have these organizations or institutions that go after the money get the grant then they decide to put their personnel together mm. to facilitate that grant because if you don't facilitate the grant then that funding goes back to that state or federal agency or organization wherever they got the money from mm. so then what they may do get the money handpick the people that they want to be a part of that and then get the people who roll them sleeves up that are going to facilitate the grant I didn't know that at first that this is the way that the game was going. Mm. And they won't make knowledge born to you either and tell you that this is what happened. They may just come to you and say, hey, would you like a position here to do this and the third? Or we have this amount of money. Um, what do you need? You know, do you want to do this, that, and the third? And then you will have rare instances where agency or organization will tell you straight up, we're going to go after this funding. This is how much it is. Would you like to come on and to do a certain program or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Because then you have that sense of equality when they're doing it in that way. But a lot of times they won't tell you something like that. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, work like 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 ten daily ten percent is really Yup. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, you know, over the years like opportunities like that opened up to me and then in early childhood that opened up to me as well. Right. So you didn't really have a you didn't go to like decide to go to college and take these courses and it, it no. was just it was just something that you just kept walking into and running into when i went to college i went for therapeutic recreation because therapeutic recreation. because at my college they didn't have a sports medicine degree or they didn't have that particular department so i had to take therapeutic recreation so mm -hmm. i was studying just working in the recreational field mm -hmm. and that's when I first started working in that particular domain with non-for-profits and different organizations that dealt with the recreational aspect of working with youth. Mm. So my opportunity started to come through that particular area, mm. which is community education. Mm -hmm. And then eventually with the early childhood, you know, that opened up to me and I've been doing that. I still have my after school program this Tuesday. I'm starting my boys as allies rights of passage program so I started that last year mm -hmm. and I got funding to do that so this is basically how my day Tuesday is gonna go <clears throat> get up and I will do an hour of that program for middle school boys at one of the local middle schools once I do that I come home and get prepared for my preschool class Mm. So then I go to my pre preschool class, you know, and then at the end of that day, I go to my after school program. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then also I have to, on Tuesday, I have to attend uh, like a campaign event for one of my, my partners that's running for mayor. Mm. So when I ran for public office, that mm. put me in a position in terms of the local political landscape and regional landscape where now I've been helping people get elected to certain positions, playing the background, mm -hmm, yeah. but it gives me a, a position of influence as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the same way when we talk about the father being a mayor's man, right, the exact right. same position. Right, right. He wasn't a politician, but his work within the community and in the city was influential enough for policy, politicians, public servants to come to him. Mm -hmm and give him certain opportunities because they understood the type of influence that he had. It's the exact same position. Mm. You know what I mean? Right, and you you, <laughs> ran, you ran for public office mm -hmm. at one point. You talk about that a little bit, like the- Yeah, the yeah, I was running for, uh, I ran for county legislator in like 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and I did it as the God, you know, mm. Saladin Allah. <laughs> I wasn't tiptoeing around it or hiding or, mm -hmm you know, trying to assimilate or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Right, and right. part of me doing that was to show the importance of being connected to your local political landscape. Because the way that legislation works is <clears throat> let us, legislation literally changes the landscape beneath your feet. Mm -hmm. You know, laws can be passed mm -hmm. in your local 
city or your community or your county that changes your way of life and if you're not aware or conscious of what decisions are being made on a political level you may not even know how that landscape is changing beneath your feet mm. so for example think about when that non-smoking law was passed in new york state mm. where you can no longer smoke within buildings and in parks and in other different places mm. some people that weren't aware of that when that law went into effect that literally changed the landscape overnight mm. where it made it literally illegal for people <laughs> to do something as habitual as what they, they were, were doing, doing. Right, right. and them not being aware of that it literally changed the landscape right beneath their feet mm. you know which put them in a position where they could actually be arrested for things that they really had no knowledge of things like that happen all the time so when I was running for county legislator I was learning things about the political landscape and how legislation works you know, so for example, in the 5%, we talk about parliaments. Mm. You know, parliaments is really a gathering where you Silent are laws. discussing yeah. legislation mm. and you're amending legislation that governs the general body, mm. not just people talking. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, it has a certain rule and order to it. You know, so I was learning about different things like that. So in terms of politics, there are certain things that are applicable to the way that we do things. And there are other things that are not applicable. You know, one of the things that I learned is some people say that it is <clears throat> in the back rooms that decisions are made. <laughs> right. Reality is <clears throat> decisions are oftentimes made on the golf course <clears throat> in some of these social environments where they keep us apart from mm -hmm. they're already made there the next phase is they do it in the back room mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know this legislation is being presented to the general public that was already made mm -hmm. something that you know people already knew before that you know what I'm saying and before that. yeah mm -hmm. so I also learned like that it's important for us to be able to speak the language so that we can empower our people with what's being discussed as thunder oftentimes above our head when it mm -hmm. comes to politics mm -hmm. you know and one of the advantages of the current nat you know administration is that the politics is so low mm -hmm. that civics is now accessible to elementary school children mm. just because of the lowness in the behavior and the way that people discuss politics a lot of times with this current president mm. so it's accessible to almost anybody you think about during president obama's administration a lot of people would be able to keep up with his articulation of certain things mm -hmm. And the words that he used, maybe a five percent of what, mm -hmm. but the average person, that shit is thunder above their head. Right, right, right. You know, so running for that that position in my my community, my city, I learned to be able to properly translate for just everyday citizens what's being discussed on a legislative level, mm -hmm. and what they can actually do about it as well. Not just simply voting. But number one, becoming more educated about who your representatives are, how they vote on certain things that affect your life, and then also taking what you're educated about to become an advocate. Mm -hmm. Something that you can speak on and support, and that you can also share with other people so that they can become advocates. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to politics on a local level and on a regional level, these are people who are more accessible to you. As opposed to like national politics with congressmen yeah, right, and senators right, right. and stuff. These are people you may not ever see in your lifetime. Yeah, right. Or even get close to. Mm -hmm. But your mayor and city council people and stuff, you may see them in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. You can talk to them about certain things or whatever. Season, you may see like uh, the, the Rossi uh, in, in, a, in, in a supermarket in New York. I yeah. Because yeah, he's more a little bit more... <laughs> out of the reach yeah you know yeah. but, but I'm not, I, I get what you're saying yeah mm -hmm. it's a lot more accessible you know and willfully me doing that and I documented that journey as well mm -hmm. that it encourages other people like ourselves to be lord of those worlds too because right. we a lie right, right, you know right, what I right, mean right, but absolutely. a lot of times people may be intimidated to be a lie within those domains it's mm -hmm. like I speak the exact same way if I'm in a boardroom full of CEOs or whatever or if I'm in a human rights commission meeting 
I'm a visitor experience specialist at our local Underground Railroad Heritage Center mm -hmm. and speak the exact same way. Just today, I was giving a tour with these students from the Ukraine mm -hmm. and I was explaining to them about slavery and then the transatlantic slave trade and then also the Underground Railroad, you know? So I build with them just like I build with anybody, you know? But I wanted to encourage people too, like, yo, you can get involved in your politics and still maintain the integrity of who you are mm -hmm. and not assimilate in or selling out or doing none of that shit. Be who you are right. because people can't deny your character and your contributions. They may not like your name, mm -hmm. but they can't deny mm -hmm. your character mm -hmm. and, your, and, and your contributions. Mm -hmm. They can't say they don't trust you around mm -hmm. your child, around their children or that, that. or that you're going to do devilishment. Mm -hmm still and tell lies and try to master people they can't say nothing like that mm -hmm. so light travels a lot faster than sound mm -hmm. you know so your reputation is always going to precede you if mega did this, did this.